Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Market Psychology 101, where we practice being cautious when there's greed in the market and looking for value when there's fear. Today, we're going to be taking a look at crypto, Bitcoin, some of the major altcoins, and let's just start with the fear and greed index from piinvesting.com. Over the last year, we are up in extreme greed, according to this chart right now. So anytime we're above 75 and waiting for it to come back down, looking at the macro, this was, of course, the great financial crisis down here. And then we had the 2020 crash down here. We do get levels where we can uh, buy in to extreme fear. But something I want you guys to notice is sometimes we can be up in greed for a while. So patience is important you do have to practice being calm and waiting sometimes for an opportunity and increasing your time in the market as opposed to trying to time the market this does not mean there isn't places to find value and of course you can always talk to your financial advisor possibly dollar cost average into something like a Roth IRA while you're waiting for more solid stock plays for you to do on your own that's where we are as far as stocks go as far as crypto we're still up here in this range i've been comparing this to 2019 a little bit i was wondering what the etf news would do it looks like we got our answer that it's a sell the news event so far i was wondering if it was going to pump maybe a little bit higher to the 236 on the fib and that we get to somewhere around 85 but so far, we're still chopping around in this range. It, it was close to popping off, but it has come back down. This is Bitcoin. Let's take a look at the last five days because this does tell a story. Here is where the ETF was approved. That's what happened. And since it sold off, it went to the um, 3A2, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, my coffee is still kicking in. Yeah, went to the 382 and then came back down to the 0.5, which is what happened here. So here it was approved and has come back down to the 0.5. It's been bouncing off. Over here was when it was fake approved. Uh, the SEC Twitter X handle before they said no, they were hacked or compromised. I don't buy it. It looked like a legitimate tweet. And so I'm wondering if they had a draft ready to go and an intern sent it a day early on accident because the very next day they did approve it. So I think they're just too afraid to admit that they're wrong. So as far as crypto goes, here it is just bouncing around the 0.5. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I think that is significant. I have a couple of fibs drawn up, one from the previous four year cycle and then one for the current cycle that's taking place. So let's start with that. And if you don't know what the four-year cycle is, this is the best way I can show it to you right here. Shout out blockchaincenter.net. This is a rainbow chart. We have the halving every four years. And this year is a halving year. It's going to be in April. And as you can see, the prices are relatively low through the halving before it spikes up. But about every four years is when we get our top. So look, this was July, June of 2011. This was just two years later, um, December 2013. So let's count from here. <laughs> December 2013, December 2017, four years later. This was in 21. Yes, it did get through to December, had that first initial peak and I will say for the last bull run it did have that early run most of the alts and Bitcoin did most of their damage early on and so people are wondering with the four-year cycle is it going to play off this peak or this peak and that's a good question so this would be if it played off this peak you could say we would have a mega bull run into early 2025 this one late 2025 or maybe somewhere in the middle. And guys, it really doesn't matter 
you never know. It, trying to make predictions in the market's just gonna make you a fool. So be prepared for both sides that anything can happen. I don't try to be a bear or a bull. I just try to have patience, increase my time in the market and react accordingly when the conditions meet my threshold. So let's talk about these fibs and the significance of it. So like I said, we hit the, let me get rid of this indicator. Oh, by the way, my indicators are working again. Just had to clear the cache from this website. So if you ever have your indicators not loading, just clear the cache from TradingView, reload it, it's all good. So this fib, we drew it from the low to the high and went up to the 382 and have come back down to the 0.5. Here is why I think that's significant and why we maybe, maybe just had a mid-cycle top. So the last four-year cycle, when we were waiting between the peaks, this was the peak of late 2017, uh, early 2018, if you include alts. But after we crashed and got to this pit of death and despair, if you were to draw fib from that low to the high, we hit the 3A2, even wicked above it a little bit, and then slowly bled down. And any time during this accumulation phase that we were below the 0.5, was a good time to dollar cost average in. Anytime we were below the 618 was a great time to get in. We did have a brief moment. This is the COVID crash. You can see the data at the bottom. This was the COVID crash sell off. When we were below the 786, that was a very rare opportunity, a little wick there. So it, it, I don't know if it's worth your uh, time to completely wait for us to break down below the 786, that may not happen. You never know. So the 786 would be down here at around 27,000. You can see here it says high 26, 27, somewhere in there. We may or may not get below that. If there was a recession to happen this year, then sure, maybe. With inflation and the CPI report coming out yesterday, and inflation being a little higher than the Fed would like, I think it's unlikely that they cut rates too soon. And it isn't just a one-to-one -one correlation that when you cut rates, inflation goes up and people have more to spend. It, it It's not that simple. But when rates are cut, markets do tend to correct, uh, go into a recession or even crash. Historically, that has been what's happened most of the time. Excuse me, just getting a sip of my coffee before it gets cold. So, not that this accumulation phase has to play out the same. From that mid-cycle top from the bottom, that was about six months in there. So you can see January of 19 to July of 19. It, it was about six months from the bottom to the top, roughly. Here it's been over a year from the bottom to the top. So if this is a mid-cycle top, then maybe we are playing a four-year cycle off this point here. You never know. And if it corrects under the 0.5, which is 42,000, maybe we'll find some time under there. Maybe we'll find some time under the 618, which is around 36,000 and possibly go down to 27,000. So I do think, in my opinion, not financial advice, I do think that accumulating underneath the 42,000 level may not be the worst thing. Now, should you do that right now? That's up to you. You're going to make your own risks. Here, we're going to take a look at, this is total market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And it's been riding this trend line up for a while. As you can see, kind of hit this zone where there's a lot of stuff over here. This was a bit of support before falling off. So it seems to be a significant zone. I am wondering if we're going to come back down. What is interesting is 
with this 1020 MA crossover with Heikinashi signals. And if we put it on weekly, I wonder if it's still there. Oh, but yesterday, yesterday I noticed it did just give a cell signal. This indicator seems to give cell signals a little bit earlier than the UT bot alert, which confirms it. Um, but so far, it, and obviously, guys, these things can chop up and down. So maybe it turns around, gets a buy signal. But so far, that's a sell signal indicating that it's coming down. It wicked below the that average right there. That's probably the 10. And who knows, maybe it'll come down to here where the, the red line is the 20. And as you can see, there's already a lot of other uh, support down there. Let's go to Bitcoin dominance. So Bitcoin dominance had a buy signal. It, yeah, this is my point right here. Things can chop around a little bit. Had a sell signal, buy signal on the weekly. Hasn't shown another sell signal. And I've talked about how Bitcoin dominance, let's get rid of this indicator, chopping around is not a bad thing. So this was Bitcoin dominance. This is since 2018 or 2017, excuse me. And this was, right here was around the mid-cycle top last time around. As you can see, we had this trend going up. Once we broke down through that trend line, and, it, and trend lines don't matter that much here. It's just a bit of support on that trend line right there. That'll come into play shortly. Once we broke down through, that was that accumulation phase I was talking about. Uh, and once we hit here, that's December. You can see at the bottom, December of 20. Where was that for Bitcoin? So December 20 was right here. That was right when we were confirmed going to our next mega bull run and breaking that high. So Bitcoin dominance, when it hit that falling trend line, it that was saying, okay, we're clearing the top and we're ready for takeoff. And we top somewhere down here and the double tops somewhere down there too. So I know some people have talked about how they're waiting for Bitcoin dominance to hit this trend line. Guys, I think if you wait there, at least according to this falling trend line, if you wait till there, that is the very, very, very last moment to even get in. So now that we've broken under, and this was the mid-cycle top, we just had the mid-cycle top, and again, we're breaking under. This one seems to be breaking under earlier, according to the trend line. So who knows what that means? But now that we're breaking under this trend line here, like we did back here, hopefully we have a little bit of time before we start blasting off. So right here, how much time did we have? And that's from mid-January 2020 to late December. So we had a year. We had a year to accumulate. So maybe right now we have a year to accumulate. That would be my guess. We will see what happens if it plays out any similar to last time. Ethereum, what's going on with Ethereum? So this is another Fib low to high. As you guys maybe could tell, Ethereum really matches total three. If you just go back and forth, it looks pretty much the same. Of course, my neighbor's dog has to start barking right now. <laughs> So, hey, shh. sorry, I'm yelling at my dogs here. Really professional video. But as you can see right here, let, let's move this fib over so we can see where we're currently at. Try to match that up as well as I can. As you can see here, it almost got up to the 0.5, but has come back down to the 618. And I just drew these couple trend lines because... I, I was thinking that maybe Ethereum would coil up in here before blasting off. And let, let's see what happens. If, uh, oh, wrong trend line. So I'm just drawing from the bottom of the bodies right there. Let's do this one. Maybe it needs a little bit of adjusting now. So this one's still relatively similar. I'm trying to make this accurate. Moving the goalposts a little bit. So 
try getting to the 0.5. It has come back down a little bit. This does make me wonder what's the altcoin chart looking at right now. Let's reload this. And it's going to put us on the alt season. We're going to go to yearly. What's alt season saying right now? So right now, and by the way, this was the top in 2018 before we chopped around. This was that mid-cycle top down here. And what's interesting, we had this little blip right here before the mid-cycle top. We had this blip right here. But the way it looks, it, you would think that the mid-cycle top already happened. And what's interesting is where we are here is different than this four-year cycle accumulation phase is different from where we are last time. So I do wonder, we had this correction, we hit the 0.5, are we going to possibly bounce and then come back down to kind of a range in here? We'll see. You never know. And guys, I'm just trying to present both cases for uh, bullish possibilities as well as bearish. So that's Ethereum. Let's take a look at some other altcoins like Link. This is just the most recent high to low. On the macro scale, that's where I have the FIB drawn to the top back here. Hit that 786, got above it a little bit, and slowly come back down. If we, I, I like the volume based support and resistance zone. If we look at this, then you could say if we were to go down, this eight to nine dollar range would be key if we were to go up where you can see we have some volume back here and it matches the 0.5 over here um, if all of a sudden something like link were to take off that maybe a go to 28 and do a 2x are there any other altcoins worth looking at right now i'm just trying to give a, a broad picture of crypto in general and of course, crypto, it's usually somewhat uh, comorbid with what stocks are doing. So stocks, at least the last couple months, been a bit overbought. Let's get rid of all, the, <laughs> all this mess here. It's been a bit overbought. We had a correction. It's come back up. Testing the all-time highs right now. Stocks look like they're doing a, a double top. And we'll see how they correct. But I wanted to make this more of a Bitcoin video. So, yeah, we'll see what's going to happen, guys. Right here, it, it looks like we're going to come back down to the 0.5. And something else to note, look at this trend line I drew. And again, trend lines are only good for as long as they're good for. But I just drew from the bottom, started going up. And I drew this a while ago, and it's kind of funny that... It, it keeps bouncing off this. It went under, came back up to it, rode the trend line, came back up, and then came back down to this trend line. So I'm wondering how long is this trend line that's just going up this way, how long is this going to continue? So maybe we go under it a little bit before going back up. If we do put on something like the volume-based support and resistance zone like I had before, Sometimes that can show us a little bit different of a picture here. So you can see that little purple box on the left. Sorry, that this big long indicator name's getting in the way. So that was the 50,000 level. We did hit a little over 49. So maybe we hit that 50,000 level. The top of that volume purple box goes up to 52. Maybe that's a target to look for if we were to bounce. Should we come back down? Looks like there's big volume right over here. This would be around 36 and funny enough at the 618. So at the 618, and, and that's where it gets into my juicy buy zone down here, I could see us possibly bouncing. This is the bull case. I could see us possibly coming down to the 618 around the th low 36 range and then bouncing to the 52 and then who knows? Maybe we just keep going up and kind of keep doing these corrections. Or if the 618 didn't hold and we got really bearish, then, you know, you can see down here where the volume is. We hit that 29 to 34 level 
if we broke under that 29, it's closer to 30,000, then we'd look at the 786 being down here, 27,000. I do think it's going to be hard to break through this 27K, 25K area. There's volume there, heavy volume support, the FIB support as well. So I, I wouldn't bet personally, not financial advice, I wouldn't bet on Bitcoin going below 27K for too much or too long. But again, you never know. So this would be my bear case. If things got really bad, of course, it could come back down and possibly test new lows. You never know. My bear case, though, would be 27K at most if this gets long and drawn out. More immediately, I could see us coming down to the 618. More immediately as a bear case. I think that's more realistic. And you have to see what happens after that. Is it going to bounce or is it going to break down? So that's where having patience and reacting is more important than predicting and then or trying to predict and then being sad that it doesn't play out. Bull case that it comes down, maybe gets some support off the 618 and then drives back up. And I could see it going to that 52,000 level. And then who knows if it did do a, a good, healthy bounce like that. Um, let me get rid of this. I do think that. This long moving average with the pi cycle indicator could possibly be in play. That's around 60K. And it's not too far above the 236. If the mid cycle top is still coming, if there is a mid cycle top, you never know if we're just going to moon early, kind of like with what happened uh, with Bitcoin last time. It wasn't four years from the last peak. It was more like three and a half, if that, um, closer to three years. But if we are to get a mid-cycle top still, and that wasn't the mid-cycle top, that maybe we hit the 236, wick above to this long-term moving average, and then come back down. That would be similar to what happened back here in 2019. We did wick above the the 382, we never got to the 236. Once we hit the 236, that was the end, and we just kept blasting off. So this was only about six months from the bottom. Our mid-cycle top so far has been about a year from the bottom. You never know. You never know. So if we are to get a mid-cycle top later, then it might hit this, it might hit this uh, high long-term moving average on the pi cycle indicator which should be again around 56 or 57,000 possibly up to 60. That's my bullish case and then of course if that were to happen other alts would then follow it. I know alts are bleeding pretty well right now and let me get rid of that and Bitcoin dominance is also coming down. So, you know, everything's a mess. But we do seem to be getting a little bit of a bounce. And at least on Bitcoin, we do seem to be settling in on this 0.5. And we'll wait to see what happens there. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this uh, video on the state of Bitcoin and crypto, at least for today. I don't think it's quite an opportunity to buy yet for me personally. I do like that, at least within the last year, the daily has broken underneath the 50 on the RSI. So I am hoping that it gets down to the oversold area. And if it does, that might, that might line up with the 618 down here and may give us some good opportunities to buy, whether into Bitcoin, or other altcoins. We'll have to see where they're at. Maybe other altcoins like Link, Ethereum, Sol, etc. are just going to be at their recent highs over here. If any of those alts did come down to a lower volume zone, lower FIB like we talked about earlier, I would be hard pressed not to buy. The risk you take is if an alt does come down, is it just coming down to bounce? 
or is it coming down to settling on a range? Because you could think maybe it's settling in and then boom, it goes down. You know, like back, oop, let me zoom out. Like back here, boom, we're settling in and then goes down. Not that it's a bad time to accumulate if you're taking a very long-term perspective. So that's all I got for crypto for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, again, this is not financial advice. It's just my opinion for entertainment purposes only. And I am trying to build a community here for the newer type of investors who are looking at dipping their toes into stocks or crypto, trying to be safe about it with low, medium level risk. I said this before, my rule of thumb when you invest, have it be something you use and something you like. So that's what I use for stocks, crypto. We, barely any of us are even using this stuff yet, so it's way more speculative. And yet it still possibly get, is giving us a big opportunity to get in early to things. So if that's the case, we're trying to be patient and buy when we are oversold, when there's fear, extreme fear, when the RSI is low, when things meet our conditions. Not to say we can't DCA in dollar cost average when we are slightly oversold or in the middle of fear and greed. We can still do that too. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just trying to be patient and look for the best opportunities that we can. So hope you enjoy, guys. Have a wonderful Saturday. Take care.